fish. Okay, none of those. Okay, we're done with those six inch fish. We're into the 12 to 14 inch fish. Come on. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> right Come on. Oh, there you go. Perfect release. In fly fishing, there are two perfect releases. The LDR, or long distance release, whereas the fly becomes unbuttoned from the fish at a distance of two or more rod lengths away from the angler. The other is the SDR, the short distance release whereas the fly comes out of the trout's mouth while the angler is either netting or is about to hand grab the fish. Both are considered perfect because the fish never leaves the water and never comes in contact with the angler. These are the preferred method of releasing your fish because as we all know, the tug is the drug. The rest is a waste of time. <laughs> That's what my guy says. Too bad. I didn't like it. It's getting soaked because I didn't dry it off after that last fish. So let's see if we can dry it off in the air here with a bunch of useless false gas and drop. Ooh, that's right in the zone. Come on, baby, smash it. You want it, it's even moving for you. Come on, it's a helpless little bug. A fish right in front of it. Oh, <laughs> come on, come on, come on. I'm making it skate for you. Come on. Oh, let's try it again here. Right in this slick, right in that slick there. Oh, baby, you see it, you see it. Come on, come on. Oh, it's right there. Coming up, yeah, it's skating towards the bushes. You're gonna lose it. Come on, come on. You didn't want that? Come on. Okay, so we've seen some fish working up in here, up in here now. So we're just gonna slowly make our way up and see what's going on. There's some little uh, maze coming off. <clears throat> There's actually a couple of caddis. So we're going to start with an upstream, there's a fish working right there. We're going to start with an upstream nymph presentation and we'll go from there. Fishing upstream and having it come back to me is actually one of the more challenging ways to fish. And what's making this even more challenging is all this, all the trees from the high water in here because your line is tailing out behind you. So you gotta think, where's your line going? Because if you get a good fish, it's gonna wrap around everything instantly. So I don't wanna be in the outside of the seam because that's all fishable water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position myself up here. And then if you look behind me, right now I have a good run out for my line to end up behind in here, my extra line. So like I said, we're gonna start up here. This is classic trout water. Look at that, nice and soft, little little foam bubbles coming down. You'll see the odd fish rise here and there. There's one right up there, it just rose. That was actually a nice fish. We're gonna target that fish first. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cast our nymph, our nymph way up and we're gonna let the line come back to us. The trick is to retrieve the line at a speed that it doesn't change the dead drift of the nymph but allows tension in the line to see the take at the rod tip. If that doesn't work, then we're gonna go into classic swinging fishing, which is we're gonna cast out here, we're gonna start out short, and then we're gonna go medium, and then we're gonna go long, and we're gonna drift it. Now, I don't know if this camera's showing it, but there's a lip right where these rocks end here, and it goes into deeper water. 
that's where those fish are going to hang. They're going to hang just on the other side of that lip, looking up and watching the things that swirl over. So we're going to start out fishing short, and then we're going to fish long, or medium, and then we're going to fish long. And we'll see how many fish we can get out of there. Now, we may go to a dry fly a little bit later just as a test. But for now, let's start up here with that fish we saw, and we'll, uh, we'll move on. And I can still get my cast into that sweet spot there. And I'm going to try and lay the fly line to the left, and the leader with my fly to the right. And then I strip back to me, letting the line fall behind me. That's the theory. Now let's watch it all fall apart. Trying to keep as much tension on the line as I can without changing the drift so that I feel the fish. Oh, there was a hit. Okay, so. I'm gonna let the nymph run out. There's fish down in there too, working a little, couple little guys. Let's go back to this guy though. Okay, that was no, the same feeling, same spot. So that wasn't actually a fish. That is a down tree that I can't see or a log or something. So we'll go a little bit to the right. See what I'm doing here is I'm just stripping in enough line that I'm a little bit slower than the current so that the bug still floats freely. I'm not pulling on the bug, oops. I am smacking it in the fishing line. <laughs> just enough to keep my drift steady, but I also see tension in the line so that when he pulls, I can feel it. A little bit of a mend, a little mend and nothing. Okay, so we're gonna rest that fish. I'm gonna go to one that I saw working down here. This is gonna be tougher. But we're going to swing it across. And I'm going to stick up over this tree here. I'm going to come down into that riffle water that they love in this temperature. And there's a fish. There you go. Ooh, he's a decent one too. He's out of the current already. Okay, we're on the reel, so it's a decent fish. He's got me in the current. These fish love to swim up and at ya. Uh, so this guy's gonna be about, let's guess, I'm, I'm guessing 10 to 12 inches. This is a beautiful little starter fish. Yeah. There he is. But now, the trick is to keep them out of that trees because they know they're not. Oh, he's coming right in. He's cooperating. <laughs> oh no, that's a much nicer fish. That's going to be that's going to be a fisherman twenty <laughs> in real life. And there's that barbless bug right out of there. That is a nice little fish. Keep in the water over there. I'm going to say that fish was 15 to 16 inches. That is a beautiful little fish. I'll take those on the Thompson all day long for action. Maybe mix it in with one two pounder, but those are very few and far between these days. There's another hit. Okay. There's definitely another couple fish in there. So we're going to keep the line lower to the water enough so that we got 
tension on it already, so they set the hook themselves and eases it up for us. You don't want to be too high up. And you'll see the line go tight real quick, instantly, and you'll feel it. I'm going to go with the stick there. Okay, we've let it drift in there and hang for a while. Be the cheater. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna bring it back out. All right. Sometimes if you go through a couple times and you get a hit and then you don't get anything, there isn't a lot of fish down there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna switch up. But I haven't seen or heard that fish move in a while up above us. So we'll do a couple casts through here and we'll change things up a bit. Like that was pretty far out there. So we're gonna bring this one in shallower. This one's a short cast. It's only about 20 feet out. We're gonna get it right on the ripple there. Right on the edge of that rip. Right on the edge of the ledge. They'll be hiding behind it and tucked in there because they can tuck in. There he is. That's a decent fish. Ooh, that's a nice, that's a hot fish. Oh yeah. See what they do is they hide in behind that lip because it does all the work for them. That's a way better Thompson fish. We're on the reel. He's screaming. So he'll tire himself out a bit in there and that current will bring him in. Oh, <laughs> But if you head for the main stem, we're gonna have a job. But we'll get it back. All right, let's see what we got here. That was a hot fish. <laughs> okay, he's now tired. Now he's tired. See when they come up on the surface like that? Over on their side, he's tired. I'm trying to gently grab him upside down. Pop that hook out. Take a good look at him and put him in the water here. Away he goes. Shorten that up a bit. Run it right through that soft pocket right there. Ooh. Oh, there was a bite. See? There it is. Oh! Okay, so there's fish in that soft pocket. You can see the line. See how the line's dancing right off the top of the water? Those are hits. You start, you tend to start fishing tight. I didn't do that this time because I saw fish working down here and I shouldn't have, but it worked out well, so. <laughs> what I mean by that story is that you should start fishing in close, because especially now, like I can fish, here's one. This is maybe a rod and a half away from me. This swing. Right, right above that lip, so. Nothing. Let's put this one down. We'll just let out about a foot, two feet of line. And we'll run this one down across that way. Oh, 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 there's a bite. So that was a little fish. It was not a, ha a hammer take. Those are some little nibblers. Okay, so, ah, okay, that. <laughs> I get excited about every take. It's a tug, right? We're out into the bigger water, and we're gonna let it come out of the big water into this soft, messed up water right in there where it's all swirling around. Now those fish will be sitting right down at the bottom looking up. Now this water is some of my favorite because you can let your fly kind of dangle in there. Okay, nothing. So we're gonna look upstream here. I'm gonna throw one upstream and just see if that guy's around. I'm gonna need a bit more line. Okay, we're going back to this where we're stripping in our line. Keeping it tight. Keeping it tight, but not too tight. See how it's falling right at the rod tip there? There's a fish. Nope! Oh, oh, oh. That's what it can be though. That could have been a fish. Now my problem is this. That's a good bug, and I don't want to go get it. Hopefully I got it back. I could have thrown a loop of line above it, but that would have been pretty hard from this distance. But let's see if we got my bug back. I'm not gonna show you guys the bug. Well, you probably have seen it. Okay, so that's good. Okay, we're gonna put this back out there now. We're gonna use that new distance that we just stripped from casting upriver. Cast out here. 
So it's gonna get a wide swing through some of the big nasty water. But it's gonna end up in that swirly again. Sometimes at night, that's where I've caught my best fish. Because they're in there and the, the big fish get big for a reason. They don't expend a lot of energy for the amount of food they eat. So by sitting in that swirly current, where the food just basically goes around like a buffet tray, they don't have to do a lot of work. They don't have to fight each other. There he is. There he is. See, all of it, we let the fish rest for a bit, and we got another one. That's another nice fish. All we did was I took about what would have been a 10 casts worth of time to have some Gatorade, and just kind of let him settle down. If I had let him settle down even more, I bet you there was more fish in there. So this guy came right in. <laughs> He's going to realize in a real second here what's going on and probably take off. Or maybe not. Oh, see. Now he's going to go crazy here in a second because there's no way this fish is rested up. But, oh, no, he's a tired fish. <laughs> there's another beautiful little Thompson River rainbow. Okay. Okay.